And that's a big deal for me is if I'm going to put in all this work, I want the image to have impact. Hi, Brent McGee Quilts here and welcome back to my studio. Last week, I gave you the story of my first coral reef quilt, Coral Fans, and this week I'm working exclusively on the second piece in that series. This piece is called Chromis, named for the, well, you can see them, these tiny little green fish that are called Chromis, blue-green Chromis fish. And this piece is a, let's see if we can get a full shot here, seven foot panorama, like I said, in progress. So this week I've got a big goal. I've been working on this quilt for over a year and a half, bit by bit. It's a huge project. And the main thing that's going to take forever is this coral applique. So in the meantime, I thought I would get a huge chunk of this done. I'm gonna complete the quilting on the wave here. So I need to finish this section of quilting here. And I thought I'd make it my challenge to finish that quilting this week. I have five days to complete it before I release this video out to the public. And so without further ado, here's the beginnings of this quilt. The process always starts with gathering inspiration. I was taken by photos of these small blue-green chromis fish darting in and out of mounds of coral. I imagined a large panorama with a field of intricate coral where hundreds of these fish would be emerging in unison. Next, I went to my sketchbook to compose an image that could be rendered in fabric. I knew the top half of the image would be the blue water, while the bottom half would be a sweeping hill of coral. The coral would be appliqued in rows, stacked and layered. Now, to include the fish, I decided they would all be moving in unison, upward, toward the light. The challenge became to establish a layout for the fish. So, I embedded an Easter egg into the composition. Hokusai's The Great Wave off Kanagawa. With its iconic large wave dominating the left side of the image and tiny Mount Fuji centered off in the distance, I used this composition as the skeleton for my composition. Now, the fish are almost leaping out and above the coral echoing the great wave. I also took inspiration from the monochromatic blue palette deciding my field of coral would be rendered in values of blue, while the fish would stand out in values of green. With the fish and coral composed, I went back to the drawing board for the design of the background. Originally, I was going to portray sun rays through the water, but I stumbled on these underwater photos of waves crashing on coral that sparked my imagination. I decided I could include a great wave of my own, and the quilting lines could be the barrel shape of the wave. So now, with the entire image composed, I was ready to dye the fabric. I laid out my 108 inch wide bleached Kona cotton fabric on an eight foot by four foot table covered in plastic. I sprayed down the fabric with water to give a watercolor effect when applying the color. Again, I used RIT dye and began by adding my lightest dilution of blue to establish the main shapes of the wave, then applying more saturated dilutions to create the darker areas. The areas near the bottom of the wave, where the fabric bled down, look interesting, but they will eventually be completely covered by coral applique, so it didn't matter if the dye wandered down. I set the color with RIT dye fixative, rinsed the excess dye, and dried it. The final product is much lighter because the dye appears much more saturated when wet. With the fabric dyed and dried, it was time to sandwich and baste the quilt. 
I used plain white extra wide Kona for the back and Hobbs Tuscany wool batting. I employed my go-to method of basting the quilt in the shapes that would eventually be quilted. Here, you can see how the basting lines echo the barrel shape of the water. And here you can see the lines indicating where the wave spreads out on the surface of the water. I also made the choice to quilt the coral field in plain lines, about a half inch apart, to secure a base to applique the coral and fish. The lines mark out how the rows of coral applique will curve with contours of the rolling hill. Next, I developed a paper template for the rows of coral. The rows had to be long enough so that when the next row of coral was applique on top, the background fabric would not show. I drew the coral rows on the fabric with permanent marker and dyed the fabric with paint brushes, being careful to keep the tips of the coral white to help sell the 3D effect of the applique layering. In similar fashion, I dyed up some green fabric and drew on the fish. The fish are applique on top of a row of coral once it has been stitched down. Then the next row of coral is applied, then a row of fish, then a row of coral, etc. until the end of time before I'm through with this gigantic piece. And that leads us to now. I'm gonna take this quilt down off the rack, put it on my work surface and get to work on the quilting. Here, you can get a better view of the area that I'm going to be quilting today. Here, you can see where I've already quilted. These nice filled-in quilted lines make beautiful shadows here. And then all this area that I've basted through here is where I'm going to be quilting this week. You can see it also comes all the way up to here and radiates out. So this doesn't look like much quilting, but when you factor this in, it's about a third of the wave that still has yet to be quilted. And I'm thinking of this area in terms of individual lines, because it's an entire line. If you look, it starts here, goes all the way up and out. So one of those I consider a line. And I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 lines that I need to do. If I'm doing it in five days, I need to do about six of these lines a day. So let's get to work. day two and I've got 21 lines of stitching left to do and a familiar, a familiar feeling is setting in and that feeling is why? 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 So that feeling of wanting to give up or you know, being overwhelmed by the task at hand essentially comes from a kind of insecurity, at least for me it does, where I start questioning all the decisions that I've made about the piece. You know, in this case, I've decided I'm gonna do these monochromatic blues for the coral and for everything else, only the fish will be green. And that design choice is bold. First of all, coral isn't blue. It's, especially this color, it's more, I don't know, 
shades of brown almost and kind of yellows and oranges but a lot of shades of brown so the blue is a choice and sometimes i wonder if that was the right choice to make is it going to be you know kind of one note and so then i go well i have to make sure when i die my you know the future coral the coral i haven't applicated yet because i because i'm dying the coral as i go then i have to make sure i'm adding enough values of blue my lights and my darks having areas of the coral that are super light and areas that are super dark to create depth in the image. So I have to remind myself of things like that. You, me, I can still control the narrative of this piece, even though the train has left the station and I've made a choice. So that insecurity um, has gotten the best of me before on this piece where I've put it away for months and months on end and figured, I don't know, maybe I'll never finish it. And then I'll get the urge again and I'll pull it out and I'll start doing some work on it. I'll applique a couple of fish, I'll put in a row of coral, I'll put in a line of quilting and I think, okay, I can do this. And then I don't know, there's something about this piece where it just boils up again and again that will it even look good when it's done? Will it even have, will the amount of time it takes to make it, will that translate to impact when when you look at it. And that's a big deal for me is if I'm going to put in all this work, I want the image to have impact. And the only way I'm going to know if the image is going to have impact is to make it, finish the image and find out. Okay, it's Day three, and I'm feeling a lot better today because I got a lot accomplished. Yesterday, I had my my rant about feeling insecure about continuing with the piece and all the work I had left to do, but I ended up getting to where I needed to get yesterday and maybe one row beyond. I'm thinking I'm actually going to be finished with this quilting on day four, a day ahead of schedule. So you know, all that fretting for nothing, basically, and who can't relate to that? Okay, so I've done three of the lines, three of the six lines that I wanted to do today. So I'm running into an issue, and the best way to show it is by showing you the back of the quilt. Kind of an interesting view. You can see this is the area that I'm working on. I'm nearly done. Here you can see the whole wave. Easier to see it here from the back actually. But you'll notice there's some areas that are kind of puckered. Puckers. I mean, there's no other way to describe it besides puckers and they're kind of unsightly. And they're, they kind of represent bad technique in a way. Um, reasons for this include, you know, the sandwich wasn't taut enough, like the back had more, um, had more slack on it than it should have. But also it's because you'll notice I'm doing a direction change. I'm going this way and then it's this whole direction change. So that can happen in those situations too. Um... I don't know, there's not a whole lot, the way I kind of work, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. And so I just kind of go, well, that's part of the story of this quilt, I guess. It happened here. It definitely irks me because I, you know, 
now I'm kind of into sending my quilts off to these shows and I know it's something that a judge is gonna look at and frown upon. So it is kind of weird to have the voice of some unknown judge you've never met in your head talking to you. <laughs> um, I had a huge leftover amounts of fabric down here where I quilted. And so what I did was I applique down the excess fabric in the back just to make it a little nicer. I had to do it here too because of all of this curvature was really causing a huge puckle, pucker ripple to happen. So I don't know if others have done that. Uh, I'm sure they've had to have when this has happened. Um, I'm sure a judge will notice if this ever gets juried into a show. But we can't live our lives that way now, can we? We can't live our lives in fear of what some judge may or may not say. just got one line left you can see of stitching that I'll need to do tomorrow morning. I've been stitching from 10 a.m. and it's now 6 p.m. and my hands and brain have had enough for the day so I came so close to finishing in four days. Tomorrow we'll finish. Okay, day five, and I've arrived at my destination. You can see here, I just have another couple of inches of stitching to do, and I will have completed the entire wave. I'll show you here in a second what all that looks like. But completing this goal really has given me a renewed, you know, vigor for continuing on, seeing this piece through no matter how long it takes. Uh, so next week, I will be continuing to work on this. I will show you my applique process, including dyeing some coral and some fish and how I apply them using needle turn applique technique to the quilt. I don't know if I'll be setting such an ambitious goal for next week, but we'll see when that video comes. I'd like to thank you for watching this video and please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed it. And as I leave you here today, I'm going to play some footage here of the completed wave. And the music that you hear is actually me. On this channel going forward, I'm gonna be making all the music that you hear in the videos. Um, so I'd like to leave you with just a little piano impro improvisation and some beautiful footage of the quilt.